electric. Welcome back to our gazebo. Um, I thought today I would try and do the video update for this Huawei battery system that I have. So it's the Sun 2000 inverter and the Luna 2000 battery. Let's get right to the crux of it. What do I prefer, the Huawei system or the Give Energy system? Well, actually, if I had to choose between the two, I would take the Huawei battery, um, but maybe not in the configuration that it is right now. But let's go through some of the detail and explain why you might be interested in this Huawei battery system um, rather than any of the other batteries that you might be considering. And one of the first things to talk about is the significant differences with the hardware. And uh, Huawei are advertising that uh, there are two main factors for that. The first one is arc fault detection. So there is some sophistication in there with their optimizers and with the inverters where they can detect arc faults. So that's um, cabling faults, connection faults between the solar panels and the inverter. And by detecting these faults, you can make sure your installation is safe and good and clean and uh, reduce the risk of fire. So it's a really good safety feature. The other feature which I think is more important for customers because the arc fault detection is probably more for the installers. I mean, as a customer, you expect it all to be working and have perfect connections in the first place. So um, for the customer point of view, the optimizers are one of the key differences. So take an example where you have an east and west facing roof. So you've got two separate roofs and uh, you need to have them optimized so that one is in shade, the other is gonna be outputting full strength and you don't want the one in shade to be affecting the performance of the other one. So you have to have them separated in some way and with optimizers, or maybe even, you know, you've got 20 panels, but two of the panels are um, an issue with shade. So those sort of issues would encourage you to put say a solar edge system in with optimizers or another system with optimizers but the Huawei system is very very different because you can optimize just those two panels or just the one roof you don't have to optimize them all so it can work by having non-optimized panels and optimized ones and that really can be beneficial cost wise for those installing a solar system solar configuration where you've got a small amount of optimization to be done but you don't want to put optimizers on every single panel i mean you can do of course and there are some benefits for doing so the battery itself that I have is a five kilowatt hour battery. It seems very straightforward and very simple. Whereas Give Energy seem to overcomplicate the state of charge and say things like it's 100% depth of discharge when it's actually not. They give you more storage inside the battery that they don't tell you about or they say it's 90% depth of discharge and then reserve 4% for later and therefore it's only 85% real depth of discharge you get. I mean, it's just way too complicated. The Huawei system is really simple. Five kilowatt hour battery, 90% depth of discharge. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. So I quite like this Huawei system. Um, and I'll explain one of the key reasons why I really like this system. And it's the performance, the performance as in how quickly the battery reacts to loads coming on and loads turning off. Now, for me, I know I'm heavily into efficiency. I really like efficiency and I want to get as close to zero grid use as I can. And some people just let go of that and don't mind. I get that. But it's more than about the efficiency. It's more than just about the numbers. The issue that we've got that I want to talk to you about is how it feels having a home storage battery. If you've got one that's not responding very quickly, it gives you the sense that you've got to micromanage it. You've got to turn this on, but not turn that on and watch how many times you turn something on that pulses on and off. For example, like a lawn mower, if you're mowing around the lawn, you might turn the trigger off and the mower will go off as you turn a corner. And then when you start again with the give energy battery, it's consuming energy every time a device comes on or off, but it shouldn't do, should it? And this is the frustration that I have with it. These delays in reacting to loads and for the Give Energy battery, it was 10, 20, maybe even more than 20 seconds, closer to 30 seconds in some instances. It makes you feel that the battery is not doing its job and it needs some assistance to do it. Whereas with a Tesla Powerwall, it's instantaneous. You can let go, you can forget about what you're doing. Just use your devices, use energy as you want and the battery sorts it out. That's what a battery is supposed to do. And the frustration that I feel reminds me of the movie with Dudley Moore, um, where they're talking about instant on lighting and his incredulation at uh, the fact that lights can actually turn on instantly. So if I just show you this clip, 
I think it'll make sense as to how I feel about batteries and whether it's an instant on battery or not. It's got IOL in every room. IOL. Now, into office lubrication. Oh, that must be it. So, what is IOL? Hey, come here. I want to show you something. Watch this. See? Instant on lighting. IOL in every room. Instant on lighting. Uh -huh. Hey, honey, look, it's true. There's virtually no delay. I thought it was some sort of come on. Are hey, you going to come here and try this? It's... IOL. Come on. God, IOL. IOL. I've always dreamt of IOL. So it's electricity, isn't it? It should be instant. So why, in some instances, are batteries slow? Well, there seems to be lots of reasons for that, and I, I don't really want to get into the technicalities of why it does it, but what you can see is not every battery system works the same. This Huawei system, I would say, is much, much closer to the perfection of the Tesla Powerwall than it is to the Give Energy battery. And the best way to explain that is to show some statistics to back that up. So if you take um, this morning chart that shows um, how much energy we were using between midnight and six or seven in the morning with the Give Energy system, you can see that there's at least a tenth going out in export and at least a tenth of import coming in. So that tenth lost on exporting and the tenth lost on importing that's the give energy battery trying to balance the grid to zero where you'd think well why is it difficult to balance it to zero because i've only got a 50 or a 200 watt load depending on whether the fridge is on or not so it's not exactly a large load it doesn't have a lot of complication to actually do it but the huawei battery really really does it so if i show you the chart for that what we get is um about 40 watt hours of export and under 20 watt hours of import. So what we're talking about is five to 10 times better with the Huawei system, that it's using less resources between that midnight period and that six or seven o'clock in the morning compared to the Give Energy. Then multiply that out throughout the day. That balancing of the grid um, does make some significant savings, but forget the savings in the numbers, it's how it makes you feel. It makes you feel that you're off the grid that the battery is just working it really can cope and just run from the battery even though the actual balancing to the grid still will incur just a little bit of energy usage so it's that sensation of the huawei system doing its job and doing it properly that attracts me to it because i don't want to spend all day every day thinking about what to turn on and when to turn on and susan calling out can i turn the oven on yet those sort of things because it's the starting and stopping of using devices which can drive you crazy. If we look at that efficiency across a larger period of time, so if we look back at the month of June, the amount of kilowatt hours we were using on the grid was, what was it, 18 or something like that? I'll show it to you here, the summation of them all. And in July for the Huawei battery, this is where we are now. In fact, what I'll show you is the like for like comparison of the same number of days to today. I think it's the 25th today. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure what <laughs> day of the week it is. So that comparison is on the screen now showing you the Give Energy number of kilowatt hours for June and the Huawei number of kilowatt hours consumed for the month of July. To be honest, it's quite similar in the amount of generation. I wouldn't say there's a significant difference between the two. So that hasn't made the difference. So what you can see is the Huawei system just does a better job of balancing to the zero point and responding quickly and letting go of the energy quickly. If anything, what I would say is it's balanced more towards the export side, so it reacts faster to devices turning on and then just hangs on to that energy just a little bit. So you get a little bit of export as devices turn off. So the other thing to talk about from the user experience of this Huawei system is of course the apps. So yes, there is a web portal and yes, there is an app and they're okay. Um, I guess there's some sort of an issue that uh, with Huawei, the app isn't on the Google Play Store, so you have to download it as an APK and download it through the back door onto your Google Android phone. Um, I've got a Huawei phone myself, so actually that was really, really easy to download and install from the Huawei app system itself. So I don't think it being Huawei and the relationship with Google in America is an issue whatsoever. You, you can still use this system and still use its app and there aren't any problems with it. But 
one of the things that surprised me was I was expecting Huawei, who are a huge, huge company um, with huge resources for software. I was expecting their, expecting their app to be a bit better. It does feel a bit like a first release. There's so many obvious things wrong with it. Um, just the obvious things like the font size, the text size, the pastel colours with white writing on the background. I mean, for goodness sake, how difficult is it to design a colour scheme on a screen so that you can actually see it? And all types of people can see it, whether they're wearing glasses or whether they're elderly or whether they're young people. It is crazy to think that somebody's designed this and used such awkward colour schemes and awkward small fonts. And do you know, it seems to be a bit of a common theme, doesn't it? Because I said the same about the Give Energy app. They keep seeming to develop it on big computer screens, but then forget the actual user is going to be using a small screen. And not everyone has really good eyesight. So what they think is colourful and bright and wonderful on their screen ends up looking really awkward to see. What you need is a good contrast between the foreground and the background on the fonts and the background, but then also what we're interested in is the data, not pretty pictures. So we need the fonts for the data to be large so you can actually see the data. So uh, come on, you developers, sort yourselves out. Anyway, how are we? It's, um, it's OK. It's, it's a little bit awkward to use. You know, it shows you the data you're interested in. You can see the state of charge of the battery over time. But again, it's the same issues as most of the other systems we've looked at, that they don't cross multiple days. You can't do 48 or 72 hours worth of usage. You can't see what happened between six at night and midnight without going to the previous day. And you can't look at this state of charge um, percentage graph over time without clicking through quite, a, through quite a few screen levels. So it's a little bit cumbersome to do the obvious things, which is a bit of a shame. I get the sense that this Huawei system is designed not for a user like me that wants to interact with it all the time, but for someone that's going to install it and let go. And I think that's where this system suits because of that user interface being a little bit lacking. Now, for me, I've got the problem that last winter I used Octopus Agile and I was changing the timers on the Give Energy system every single day. Now with this Huawei system, I couldn't actually do that because I don't have access to those timers. Yeah, a customer can't change the time of when you're going to charge the battery overnight from cheap energy. That just seems ridiculous. So I have been looking uh, through the Huawei forums. I have been asking support questions and it looks like the answers are coming back to say the customer should be able to do this. But everything I can see and everything Power Different can see with the user interface that the installer can set up for me, it doesn't seem configurable and it doesn't seem that those options can be provided to me. So something is going wrong here on the expectation of what the system should do versus what it actually does when installed. So again, Power Different are going to be talking to Huawei to find out why that is and why those features aren't enabled to me. I can see why I shouldn't get a lot of those features because a lot of them are um, custom options for the installer and they're quite technical so you wouldn't want a customer having access to them all before they screw up the configuration but you do want to be able to set timers for charging the battery the good news is there's not just one timer or two timers there's quite a few so once you've got access to them they work quite well so for me it looks like a system that you could set up and use for maximum self usage and leave it alone or it's a system you can set up for cheap energy between say midnight and five in the morning and then leave it alone it does seem to work quite well but it's not a software interface that's suited if you're going to want to fiddle with it on a regular basis using something like octopus agile energy tariff here in the uk so that's a bit of a shame. The hardware is really, really good. It responds really well and it gives me the sense of using a battery as I would expect it to. It's an instant on battery, but the software interface isn't really fully featured and doesn't give me the options to export energy easily and controllably. There's lots of little quirks about it that um, the battery um, actually makes some noises while it's charging and in use. Um, a little bit of whirring as if there's some sort of fan going on and this rather odd ticking noise.
So it's a little bit different to the other batteries I've been testing. Um, there's some uh, flashing LEDs on the front that indicate each flashing LED is 10% of the battery. That's better than the Give Energy one, which I think was like uh, every 25% or something like that. So the granular level didn't really help you understand how charged the battery was. But this Huawei system um, doesn't show you anywhere um, how full the battery is or how many kilowatts you've got off your solar panels because remember this is a hybrid inverter so it's also looking after my solar so in my garage at the moment um, there's nothing to show me there's no screen to show me how many kilowatts of solar I'm actually generating I can only see it using an app so again my old solace inverter that showed that information on the screen I, I like that I do like to be able to see what's going on when I'm in the garage or when I'm indoors on the phone etc I need to be able to see what's happening with the system so talking about the savings and the efficiency, let's put that into perspective though, because it's not as important as you really think, because to me, the numbers and the proportions of the number and the saving, they're big. But when you look at the cost difference between the Give Energy system and the Huawei system, the energy cost of what I'm losing in export, and what I'm losing in bringing some energy in from the grid, it's just a couple of pence difference. So the difference between an average of 0 0.4, 0 0.5 kilowatt hours a day to an average of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 kilowatt hours a day, you know, it's at least half the energy, but half of five pence is just two pence, two and a half pence. Two and a half pence a day is, you know, it's 50, 60 pence a month. It's not a lot of money and therefore is it really worth worrying about? And this is where you can get messed up with the data because the system is a lot more efficient. Proportionally, it's a lot, lot better, but it doesn't really make a lot of difference. So if we've already saved those last four, five, six, seven, ten kilowatt hours of grid usage by having a battery, then saving that last half a kilowatt hour, is it really important to you? Now, it is to me because I want a system that works as it's expected to work and I want a system to work where the battery picks up the load and it is providing all the energy that you need and you're not using the grid so it's almost like I want it completely off grid and that seems to be how the power wall works the power wall seems to get away with um, isolating the grid in some way and using its own parallel grid system within the Tesla power wall battery and that's how it can do the instantaneous responses because it doesn't seem to have to comply to the ramping up and ramping down rules that other batteries uh, appear to have to conform to. So yeah, I want a system that works properly and so therefore that half a kilowatt hour that the Give Energy system was still inefficient by is important to me, but monetarily it's not important. So if you're looking at a battery from a purely monetary point of view, if the Give Energy battery is cheaper, even though it's then going to cost you a little bit more in grid use, monetarily it probably makes more sense to go with the Give Energy system. But if you're installing from scratch and those optimizer details make a difference to you, then the Huawei system could end up being the cheapest solution overall. So it really is swings and roundabouts with all these things, isn't it? And uh, there's one other thing to mention that this Huawei system, although it's efficient with the battery side of things, it doesn't seem to be that efficient compared to my Solus inverter on the solar th side of things. So when I look at my solar generation on the Huawei inverter compared to the Solus inverter, I'm down on average about one kilowatt hour a day. Now one kilowatt hour doesn't sound like a lot of energy, but multiplied over the 30 days for a month, that's 30 kilowatt hours. That's a full charge of my mini. Yeah, that, that's quite a chunk of energy. So I might have saved half a kilowatt hour a day through its optimization of not exporting and not bringing in from the grid, but then I've lost a kilowatt hour a day through um, not generating as much. Now, I'm not saying that the Huawei system is poor. What I'm saying is the Solus inverter that I had must be bloody brilliant. Um, the statistics on how I'm working this out is I'm looking at the ratio of the panels installed, the kilowatt P panels installed on the Huawei inverter or Solus inverter, comparing that to the proportion of kilowatt P kilowatts installed on the Solar Edge inverter that we've got here and then comparing that as a ratio of the two and looking at the percentage and it should be around 60 61 percent difference between 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels and 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels now on the huawei inverter it is looking around 60 61 percent and therefore it's equaling the performance of the solar edge inverter because that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be at that level 
but with the solace inverter I was seeing much more of a proportion towards the solace inverter so we were only achieving 56 to 59 percent compared to the solar edge inverter and therefore the, it was making the solar edge look bad and in winter with really dull conditions that percentage would go all the way down to 30 percent so 30 40 50 percent is a poor indication on the solar edge um, solution I thought but now that we've got this Huawei system installed it's exactly the same as the solar edge so it's looking more like it's not solar edge that's an issue or Huawei that's an issue it's just that the solace inverter that I had was really really good and it generated lots of energy so in a perfect world what would I like I would like my solace inverter generating the energy from the panels and I would like the Huawei battery handling just the battery as an AC coupled battery so there you go, the Huawei Sun 2000 and Luna 2000 system is a really good solution. It has some unique features, but the software interface is a little bit lacking at the moment. And I would hope that Huawei in the UK realise that their system's not suited to the energy market here with, with time of use uh, tariffs. So I hope they do something about that app, get rid of the pastel colours, increase the size of the fonts as well, and give the users the parameters that they should have. Hopefully that'll get done uh, sooner or later, and then the system will be even better. But for me, no, this hybrid system doesn't work for me because I've got these split arrays and the data's all over the place and working out this array is looking after charging the battery and this array is looking after heating my hot water. This split system and how they're working or not working together doesn't suit me going forwards. You know, I can work it out. It's, you know, it's not that complicated, but it is just a pain in the backside. It was hard enough to explain to Susan how our system worked before, yet with this hybrid system, you know, there's just no point even trying to talk to her about it because she's just not going to get it. So, yeah, so for someone that loves the stuff, it's not that complicated, but for someone that uh, is new to all this solar and kilowatts, no, this hybrid system isn't working for me. But it has been really good to test it because my thought of what a hybrid system was like before I tested it and now my knowledge of actually knowing what it's like has improved greatly. So I'm very grateful for Power Different for installing this and letting me try it. So I don't think there's much more to say about it. There's some very good pluses and there's a couple of negatives there with the Huawei system. Uh, it's a little bit odd that even though I know that there are more issues with the Huawei system for me than there were with the Give Energy system, I find the Huawei system better because it's it's just a better implementation and it makes me switch off a little bit more. I don't want to be that geeky person running around working out whether I can optimize the turning on and off of devices a little bit better to get the stats better with the battery. It's I want to be able to switch off and just uh, let the system do what it's supposed to do. So that's what I'm looking for. That's my quest. That's what these tests for me are all about. Um, Power Different are getting the benefit of me testing these systems to work out how to install them and how they're suited for their customers. I'm getting the uh, value out of these tests by working out what I want as the ultimate battery system. So yes, I want more kilowatt hours of storage. Yes, I want more power. I want faster charging. I want an app that actually does the things that I want it to do. And one of the important things, I want it to ramp up and down really fast instantaneously. I want an instant on battery, just like the Tesla Power wall but I don't want the power wall because I don't want the automation and I don't want it making its own mind up what to do I like to have control so that's the ultimate battery I'm looking for a power wall type system with all the control in my hands that's what I'm looking for thanks for watching thanks for listening I hope this was useful and uh, if you've got any thoughts about the Huawei battery or the give energy one leave me some comments uh, below and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can thanks for watching take care see you again soon bye for now